In this video, we're going to go over the juxtaglomerular apparatus and the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. These two essentially work together to help the body respond to decreases in blood pressure. The first thing we might want to consider is why is a decrease in blood pressure a problem for the kidneys? Well, if you recall, the role of the kidneys is in part to help excrete waste and toxins from the body. And part of this process occurs through filtration, where fluid is forced across the glomerular capillaries into the renal tubule. And when the hydrostatic pressure decreases in the glomerular capillaries, less fluid is going to be filtered into the renal tubule. This means that the body is going to accumulate toxins and waste. So that's why it's important for the body to respond to decreases in blood pressure. So let's start with the juxtaglomerular apparatus. This is the contact area between the afferent arterial and the distal convoluted tubule. If you think about most textbook diagrams you've seen of the nephron, you probably might be wondering, well, I don't recall the afferent arterial making contact with the distal convoluted tubule. And that's because most textbook diagrams of the nephron is oversimplified. And in this diagram, you can see a slightly more realistic portrayal of the nephron. And in general, you can see that the structure is more convoluted, more twisted than those simplified diagrams. You can also see, indeed, there is a contact area between the afferent arterial and the distal convoluted tubule. That is the juxtaglomerular apparatus. In the afferent arterial, there are juxtaglomerular cells that are baroreceptors. That means these cells respond to changes in the pressure in the blood. And specifically, the juxtaglomerular cells respond to decreases in blood pressure by secreting renin. And as we'll discuss shortly, renin will help to increase blood pressure in the body. In the distal convoluted tubule, we have cells called the macula densa. These cells are chemoreceptors that respond to changes in the NaCl concentration. And specifically, they respond to low NaCl concentrations. And in response to detecting low NaCl concentrations, these macula densa cells will stimulate the secretion of renin from the afferent arterioles and dilate the afferent arterioles. So renin is really just to help the production of renin and dilating the afferent arterial, this acts to bring more blood, more fluid into the glomerular capillaries and to increase the hydrostatic pressure to allow more fluid to be filtered. One thing you might wanna consider is why does the macula densa respond to low salt concentrations as to perhaps high salt concentrations? And that's because Low salt concentrations is essentially the same thing as decreases in blood pressure. So you have to remember, when fluid is forced across the glomerular capillaries into the renal tubule as filtrate, not all of that filtrate becomes urine. Some of that filtrate is going to be reabsorbed into the bloodstream. And how much reabsorption occurs does depend on the pressure difference of the fluid in the renal tubule and the fluid in the bloodstream. So when there is a lower pressure in the bloodstream, that means more fluids and more solutes are going to be reabsorbed from the renal tubule into the bloodstream. And if more solutes are going to be reabsorbed, that means by the time the filtrate reaches the distal convoluted tubule, it's going to be at a lower concentration than usual. So that's why, again, low salt concentrations at the distal convoluted tubule is the same as decreases in blood pressure. Okay, so that's the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Let's now take a look at the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. As we discussed, in response to decreases in blood pressure, the juxtaglomerular cells are going to secrete renin. Renin is an enzyme that converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 in the blood. This means that angiotensinogen is a zymogen. It is an inactive form of a protein. And if it is cleaved, then it will turn into its active form. Now, angiotensin 1 is slightly active, but turns out that it needs to be converted to another form to be more potent. So 
Angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme, also called ACE. ACE is produced by the lungs and the kidneys. Angiotensin 2 is going to be the main effector molecule in this, in this system. It stimulates systemic vasoconstriction, which is by itself going to increase blood pressure. It also stimulates the secretion of ADH or vasopressin from the hypothalamus. This is going to increase water reabsorption in the collecting duct of the nephron, so that will also increase blood pressure. And finally, it will stimulate aldosterone secretion from the adrenal cortex. Aldosterone will act on the distal convoluted tubule to increase sodium reabsorption. When more sodium is reabsorbed, this is going to increase the solute concentration in the blood, and an increase in solute concentration is also going to increase water reabsorption into the blood. So again, this is going to result in increases in blood pressure. So combined, all three processes will help to increase blood pressure in the body. And as a summary, overall, these two work together to help the body respond to decreases in blood pressure.